I'm excited to be here. I, I feel very honored, um, as well as my family. We, we're very excited to be here. And um, I will tell you that uh, growing up in the inner city, you don't have many dreams of being in the Hall of Fame. Um, so for me to uh, be inducted here as a part of class of 2010, um, it's a dream that uh, I could have never dreamed, but I'm glad I'm living this, this one, and I'm glad it came true. Um, I feel very fortunate to represent the WNBA as the first WNBA player to be inducted. Um, hopefully I represent y'all well. <laughs> Um, and then, and, and thank you all for coming. Um, I'm, I'm very honored, so thank you very much. So welcome to So Much to Talk About here at the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame 2010 uh, induction weekend. My pleasure to have on one of the great, uh, I wouldn't say just women, female basketball players, one of the great basketball players ever for the dominance that she had on the court and, uh, and for the class that she's shown off the court. My pleasure to have 2010 inductee, Miss Cynthia Cooper Dyke. Pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. You are bringing in Los Angeles and uh, the fact that you were able to go to USC and perform at a highly competitive level your mother, who passed away from breast cancer, was such an influence. So talk about how she influenced you to be the best and to, to elevate yourself out of your predicament at a young age. Yeah, I think my mom um, taught me that you can do anything you want to do if you set your mind to it. And, and she taught me how to persevere. And a lot of what my mom did was my mom, she, she showed me things. Just She led by example. Um, she, it seemed like she worked for 24 hours to raise eight kids by herself. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, she did a tremendous job. And, and, I, and I think for, for my mother, uh, she taught me to believe in me. She taught me that the person staring back at me in the mirror was enough to achieve anything that I wanted to achieve. And, and I took that and I was able to, to, to take that and, and apply it to basketball, apply it to life, apply it to being a mom, apply it to being a wife. And, um, and I've always wanted to be the best at whatever it was that I participated in. You definitely were, especially when you went out to Europe um, and you played out there for, for a decade, you know, in Italy and Spain and um, those countries. Talk about how um, those experiences really was able to, to, to have you grow as a basketball player and as a person. Yeah, I think when I went over to Europe, uh, my first experience is, well, first of all, I when I participated in basketball in Italy, I participated as an Italian, not a foreigner. I lived in Italy as an Italian, so I learned the language. I learned how to get around in, in a foreign country. Now remember, that's, this is a little girl from Watts, um, but I will tell you that I went to Italy as a little girl from Watts, and I came back um, from, from Italy as a more complete, not only person, but also player. I went to Italy as a six-man, a role player, I left Italy as a go-to player, um, as a quote-unquote star, um, learning how to develop. I developed my game and my person over over in, in, in um, Italy. And so I think the WNBA reaped the benefits of the work that I put in overseas. And um, I, I know you were, did you ever think that something like the WNBA wasn't going to happen? Yeah, I thought that, I, I always thought that the WNBA would happen. I just thought it would pass me by. I thought I would already be retired, and in fact, I was probably close to retirement before the WNBA um, started. Well, I will tell you that um, the, my motivation in the WNBA was always, I, I have this opportunity to show the fans of America, the fans of Houston, what I've been doing overseas for 11 years. I don't want to miss this opportunity. So that motivated me. But then the second thing was I got a chance to perform at home in front of my family, my mother who hadn't seen me play in years. And that was motivation for me to come out every single game and perform. And talk about uh, how, how disappointing and sad and are you that the Houston com comments are not around anymore? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's incredible that we can actually say that the Houston comments aren't around anymore. That's incredible to me. Uh, We've, we were the first dynasty of the WNBA, and so, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's amazing that the comments are no longer uh, around. So, for, for me, it's very sad. Um, it, it's, you know, it takes my breath away to, to think um, of how, what great years we had, and now they're no longer around. But um, 
you know, I hope, I hope the WNBA um, continues to grow and, and continues to do well so that they provide uh, a safe haven and, and a, an opportunity for young kids to play professional basketball in America. Now you're a teacher, you're a coach, you know, first at Prairie View A&M and now uh, with UNC Wilmington, the Seahawks. So uh, what do you share to the young ladies and, and um, uh, what type of advice do you give them to, to let them know that they can achieve whatever they want to achieve, not just on the basketball? I think for the most part, I, I really try to instill in my players and not only at Prairie View A&M, but now at um, UNCW, University of North Carolina, Wilmington, uh, instilling them the, the work ethic, um, the passion that I have, the, the determination and, and the will to be the very best they can be day in and day out. Don't take a day off. Don't take a game off. Don't take a practice off. Don't take a day off in class. Study hard. Uh, uh, Set goals for yourself. Achieve those goals. And then guess what? You're going to be a better person, a better player because of it. And so um, that's what I believe, and that's what I try to teach my kids. Honor to meet you, and congratulations on your induction. Thank you so much. Thanks.